as we modernize the system, we're also introducing some new users into the system. Uh, commercial space has become a much more uh, important part of the system where we now are integrating uh, vertical operations into our otherwise horizontal system. And of course, unmanned aircraft systems uh, are, being, uh, are in the process of being incorporated into our system as well. When you fly an airplane, you do three things, actually. You fly the airplane, which is the most important thing that you're doing. You navigate and you communicate. And those three things make up the heart of what somebody does when they're operating an airplane. Now, if you compare that to driving a car, communication is not a big part of what you do, but it's a very big part of what you do uh, when you fly. Navigation started as a very, very basic thing, dead reckoning, piloting, pilotage, uh, looking for landmarks on the ground. We now have uh, things called VORs. We have about a thousand of them in the US, and they're basically beacons that your airplane can talk to and tell you in what direction is that beacon. It's hard to call these controllers. I think trackers might be better. If you think of a flight at Logan, it's going to have a fair amount of communication to get its clearances for its flight. It's going to have communications with ground control so it can traffic, so it can uh, taxi out. It's going to have communications with the tower for clearance for takeoff. And then when it gets in the air, it's going to have communication with various controllers uh, throughout the system. So it's a fairly intensive communication uh, workload uh, for pilots. There's one more actor, if you will, uh, in addition to the, the pilot, and that's the controller. And that additional activity uh, is, is surveillance. How can the controller see you and see where you are uh, in the system? And of course, uh, that's where radar comes in. Um, we've been using radar uh, certainly since the war, and that has been our primary focus for seeing the aircraft uh, in the system. And from a controller's point of view, the reason you want to see the aircraft is because your primary function is to keep the aircraft apart. Separation of aircraft is really the controller's main job. This is actually uh, not from the Smithsonian. This is an example from a Tracon. The, we still have these systems in use. Uh, I don't think there are vacuum tubes involved here, but it's uh, some, some pretty old technology how we're going to upgrade our ability to conduct surveillance, um, how we're going to change navigation in the system, uh, moving from the zigzag VOR to GPS, and uh, how we're going to change communications. We didn't have any money for uh, anything until 2009. So actually, it's only been uh, fully underway for, for about five years. In round numbers, it's, it's designed as a 20-year $20 billion program. Fundamentally changed the way we do surveillance, uh, navigation, communication, and ultimately how we, uh, how we aviate. So if we start first with the surveillance, we're upgrading um, the, the entire network that previously was based on radar. So to, to put this in context, there are about 60,000 flight operations every day. So we run a 365, 24-7 system. You can't turn it off. You have to, so any work you do to it, you have to do it while it's still running. Uh, keeping that in mind, what we're doing is pulling out all of the old equipment and putting in completely new equipment, new computers, new screens, new software, new training, new procedures throughout the entire system. That foundational piece of the program is finished. All of the technology, all the computers, the screens, the procedures, everything will, will be changed out in the larger TRACONs uh, by, sp by spring of 2016. The high altitude centers, uh, that program's called ERAM. The new system looks a little bit different than the old. The old system with radar would be a refresh of the location of an aircraft every five to 12 seconds. Uh, the new system, which operates on uh, ADSB, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, basically gives you instantaneous uh, awareness of where the aircraft is. And this allows you to use much more precision in directing air traffic uh, and, and controlling aircraft. But it is, it, is, it is replacing the radar, and it is giving us that uh, almost instantaneous. It's about a one-second uh, uh, awareness of location. So that very important and expensive piece of the infrastructure is now complete, and these feeds are being 
put into the new centers and TRACONs uh, to give us that awareness. Um, we have already seen uh, some benefits from this. And it gave us uh, much better visibility of aircraft in mountainous areas uh, in ways that radar can't do and, uh, and, and led to a very significant uh, decrease in fatalities in Alaska. Navigation. This is the electronic bonfire. Uh, this is the VOR. We have about a thousand of these in the system. We are already navigating now with GPS. So instead of moving between designated locations dictated by where the beacons are, we can create virtual uh, locations in, in space and navigate with the GPS for much more efficient, efficient routings. Uh, we call this performance-based navigation. You'll hear the term PBN. But I think it's best to think of it as we've taken this old system of back roads and we're building an interstate system over it. Uh, instead of zigzagging through towns, we now have uh, highways that connect cities. So we're building PBN routes between cities. And then when you get to the city itself, we're redesigning the airspace in the city. So all the on-ramps and off-ramps uh, into the airport are getting redesigned as, as part of this effort. We've redesigned the airspace uh, in the Houston area uh, using the, the PBN technology. There were 61 new procedures that were put in overnight. So it was a, an overnight redesign of the, of the entire airspace around Houston, which means all the new routes had to be published and pushed out to all the operators. The GA community has, has been out in front. You can navigate by simply typing in your destination and you get a little visual of an airplane and a little line that you follow. With this ADSB technology, you also get traffic data uh, on that screen. So it will show uh, indication of other aircraft in the vicinity and it'll show you whether they're at your altitude or below or above your altitude. You can also see weather uh, on this. You can back it out and see where the fronts are moving. There is a huge amount of data that we have on weather, on traffic, uh, on, on um, routings that is, again, not really networked. And so we're building that into a network, into a centralized hub system, if you will, so that data can be shared uh, by all users, by airlines, airports, pilots, uh, really anyone in the system.